Good day, everyone. This is a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in lovely Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We are sitting here live, pre-recorded in MTR Studios with two couple of uh, wonderful people, which I'm going to introduce in a second. But they are going to be the first people part, as part of our Be Our Guest program. This is the very first one. I want to thank them for coming out. We have one person on our right, one person on our left, person on my right. Introduce yourself, please. Hi there. My name is Stefan Porfirio. Perfect. That, well, you've been practicing that. That's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. And on my left. Hi, I'm Paulina Luciani. Paulina and Stefan, thank you guys for coming out today for being part of the first ever Be Our Guest. No problem, Thanks our for pleasure. Us. Thank you. Oh, no problem. I want to thank you guys for sure. No. Now, before we get into our first song, I want to get to uh, one of you, whoever wants to go first, to give me your little program bio. You know, give me your little bio that's found okay. in the program. Who wants to go first? Well, ladies first. So, um, so <laughs> yes, so princesses first. So, Stefan. Wow, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all right. So, uh, so hi okay, there. go princess. Yeah, answer okay. whoever. Even though I haven't played one yet, but <laughs> yet, um, okay. So, like I said, my name's Stefan. Um, I've done a lot of like um, shows. I've done the most recently. I was Lumiere in Unionville Theater Company's Beauty and the Beast. I played uh, Marcellus and Stephen Out's um, Music Man. I played the nanny Mrs. Bumbrake and Peter in the Starcatcher with Vanny College Productions, where I that's where I met this lovely host over here. That's that where would I met, be me. Yes, that would be. That's where I met this one. And I've done a lot of other shows too in the area. Like I was the Big Battle Wolf in Shrek the Musical. I played Scuttle in the Little Mermaid as well at Unionville Theater Company. And yeah, I've been doing a bunch of roles and fun roles for that now for the almost almost for the last eight years now yeah so it's well, been a while it's gonna be a really big program for that bio oh Holy yeah, mackerel. yeah. <laughs> there's way more on that but i de- I, I, I decided to leave it short <laughs> okay good yeah. all right paulina let's throw it to you hi yeah so i'm about to graduate uh from york university with a theater degree um so that's exciting and like stefan i've been doing theater for the last eight no more like 10 years um, most recently, I was Belle in Beauty and the Beast. It just closed about a month ago. I was also Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Um, I'm also currently production manager for Vanier College Productions, and I did quite a few shows with them, uh, one of them being Little Women, where I played Beth. Um, I've also dabbled in film and television stuff, uh, but overall, mostly been doing musical theater with a couple of plays here and there. Um, I don't know if anyone knows the Penelope ad, but that I was do. the time. I do too. <laughs> it was Penelope. So uh, who'd you do uh, Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid with, Paulina? Um, this great company called Unionville Theatre Company. Not at all um, related to Stefan Porfirio. Don't know who that is. Yeah, you don't want to talk about nah. that guy. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> you can't see this, but he's prompting her to talk about himself oh, in the show. You can I like, know. hear it in the voice. <laughs> I mean, what else is new? <laughs> Not even hiding it. Well, because you were both in Beauty and the Beast, and this is Be Our Guest, yeah. let's make our first song we play on the show from Beauty and the Beast be yes, our guest we'll be right here our choreography. <laughs> on musical theater radio we are back here on musical theater raiders be our guest i'm your host jean paul yovanoff and that was bring on the men from jekyll and hyde right guys that was jekyll yes. and hyde? Yeah. yeah so Love that song. uh how did the two of you meet who wants to go first i'll go first yeah go for it all right so um we met doing a show, actually, um, and it was for Unionville Theatre Company's production of Once Upon a Mattress. It was my second show with UTC, and it was Stefan's first show with UTC. Um, and so we met while doing that show. Stefan w- played Prince Dauntless, and I played Lady Rowena. I played Prince Dauntless. Yes! No yes. Uh, That's no. such a fun and- role. There right? we go. That was a high five, yeah. just in case you didn't know. It's a great show, great role. Yeah, so he was Prince Dauntless, I was Lady Rowena, and yeah, we kind of just like hit it off, and then we, we've we been like inseparable ever since. Yeah, seven, eight years now almost. Yeah, eight years, and we've been, every single year we come back to that same theater company. If we're not in a show, we always help out backstage. Yep, So always. check out Unionville Theater Company if you want a good, fun 
company if you're young <laughs> young or person. old we've got or old. they've of, got all ages yeah. but it's a great place to grow and learn a lot of a lot of the things i learned i learned a lot from them and from other people but that's where i generally started was from them mm-hmm. they i was my first role outside of school and outside of like a, a smaller company but it was like the first big show and first big role i ever got so i learned a lot from them and it helped me grow a lot into the person i am today yeah. That's funny because I was part of that company for a yeah, show yeah. as well. I, I was in um, Annie. Annie. That's right. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy Warbucks. Daddy Warbucks. Yeah. I remember that. That's, uh, I'll be honest. I'm not a fan of that show. I only like, I only like one song. For me. Annie was my first ever show. I was 12 years old. And I, was, yeah. I was an orphan and I was obsessed with it. <laughs> so my, you weren't the orphan yeah. in the show I was, right? Because that would have been no. really weird. Uh, no. no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. I, I just, yeah. no. It was my elementary school. Oh, okay. If we're if we're not count um i did a bunch of school uh shows in high school that's where i started actually it was in grade nine but we did like a lot of odd shows not really but like my first outside of high, like i did wizard of oz once in high school but everyone does wizard of oz at some point oh, yeah. more or less not me we did wizard of oz a second <laughs> i've done time. it three times. <laughs> three times three times and i've only been in theater for seven eight years and i've done it three times already did you do it with uh utc, UTC? Oh, no. uh so i my first time i did it was when i was in high school i went to saint augustine yeah. and i played Nico, who's the head of the Flying Monkeys. The second time I did it, I was I did it with Markham Youth Theater, and I was the Cowardly Lion. And, and I then I did Glinda. it, yeah, and Colleen was Glinda in that production. <laughs> and then I did it with Univille Theater Company back when they did it uh, a year ago, and I was backstage. So I was in was a, one of the ASMs. ASMs, and I was one of the head of the Fly units. Cool. But yeah, I've done it three times. I've sat and listened to Follow the Yellow Brick Road many times. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm. I don't. Yeah, there, yeah. Are, there are only so many times I can sit through that show yeah. again another show I'm I mean, not yeah. a huge fan yeah. of with UTC <laughs> I was follow spot for that show so I also had to watch it every yeah. single time well it's okay it's a great show it's a fun show but I don't have to hear about it for I'm okay with that for a bit but I would really like to play the wizard one day especially in like Wicked or even or even the Andrew Lloyd Webber version yeah out, he's got some really good songs in that one so you guys were together at UTC yeah. And then you're together at York? Yeah. Was this planned or so, did it just weirdly work out that I'll, way? I'll take this one on. Um, yeah. So the way we actually learned it was really funny is that because we both, uh, Paulina goes to, like she said, she goes to York for theater and I actually go for history. I'm a history major there. And we were talking about uh, like seeing if there was any kind of theater group there. And then I just remember getting a message from Paulina one day. She's like, Stefan, there's a theater company at York. I was like, there is? Like, what do they do? And she's like, they're doing Jekyll and Hyde. I'm like, there's a musical about Jekyll and Hyde? And she goes, apparently. So we found out it was um, Vanny College Productions and we both auditioned and thankfully we both got in that year. And we actually, it was funny because we actually both played members on the board of governors. I was, was Lord Archibald. That's all I remember his Archibald name. Archibald Proops. <laughs> oh yes, Archibald Proops. Yeah, she remembers about that. And then she played General Glossop. General Glossop, yeah. which is originally a male role. Which is Okay. But we, we gender bent. I was a badass. I mean, female you did, you did die century. by getting hit by a twig, pretty okay. much. You're ruining the show for anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah. Well, so the spoilers. twig death is most important, I assume, <laughs> no. with Jekyll and Hyde. No, it was spoilers. just mostly our show because she had a little cane. <laughs> and it was like a twig, really. Oh, okay. Cane. That's all it was. Um, but yeah, that's how we basically started doing shows at yeah. York. But um, we. Because when we, we started applying together. And it was actually Stefan who found out about the theater com- the theater program at York oh. um, and told me about it. And we kind of both wanted to go to York because we both wanted to stay in the GTA. We didn't really want to move away. It just wasn't our thing. Um, and we both, yeah, we, we kind of, we had the same idea of like we wanted to, we wanted to stay around the area. We wanted to stick with UTC. We didn't really want to move away. So York was kind of our only option. Um, there wasn't really anything into like downtown Toronto that was calling our name. I'm not a huge fan of, I'm not going to shade any schools. I'm not going to shade any programs. I don't know who's listening to this. Don't don't do that on radio. So I'm going to hold it in. (laughs) But, um, yeah, so, uh, I was a big fan of the York theater program and Stefan was a big fan of the history program. So it kind of just happened like (laughs) uh, during our entire friendship, everything kind of just it segued it's in together and- it's funny because we did before applying to universe we did um once on a mattress together and then the year after that we did shrek together and then we did jekyll and hyde together at york but after that we didn't do a show for about two 
years together or a year. It was a year we didn't do a show we, together. because no, then we did, right after Jekyll and Hyde, we did Wizard of Oz together. Yeah, and but we weren't on stage. Well, yeah, we did, but that was during the summer. But then... Uh, and then we did Little Mermaid together. No, but that was before... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. And then we had like a three-year three year. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So after we did Little Mermaid, there was actually like a three-year gap where we didn't do a show together on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were both doing other stuff. Pauline was doing stuff with Vanity College Productions, and I went around the GTA doing stuff with Stepping Out on Scarborough Music Theater. I was kind of bumping away, and then I did. Uh, I came back for one year to do Peter and the Starcatcher with JP over here, which okay. was a lot of fun. Um, but then we came back together for Beauty and the Beast that just finished, and that was like our first time on stage and doing a show together in it three was years. So great. And we got to play two of our dream roles and the two characters that are like best friends on stage. So it was like just we perfect. perfect and it was natural it was, just it was kismet that it happened yeah. <laughs> yeah cool so we're gonna play another song we're gonna let Stefan choose what would you like us to play oh gee um hmm well you know it is getting pretty hot outside and I am starting to get a big fan about uh, the new revival of Kiss Me Kate so why not Too Darn Hot from the original Broadway cast let's do that Too Darn Hot here on Musical Theater Radio we are back from paying a few bills. We've got to keep the lights on here in the MTR studios in beautiful downtown, uptown Toronto. Here on a Saturday afternoon, my name's Jean-Paul Yovanoff, and we have a couple of fantastic people, Paulina and Stefan, as our first guests on the program, Be Our Guest. So let's talk about a little bit about um, uh, musical influences, composers and lyricists that you guys admire or, or look up to or, or just love in general. So, uh, Paulina, let's start with you. All right. That's such a tough question. <laughs> um, so, I am an old school person. I'm a traditionalist. <laughs> I am. He's mouthing, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'm a, a huge fan of Stephen Sondheim, and Andrew Lloyd Webber, those are, I stand so hard. But Sondheim, he's just, he's a genius, like with his lyrics and his rhythms, um, it's incredible. And Andrew Lloyd Webber, I love every single piece of music that he writes. Um, I, I always feel that like the godliest song would be if Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote the music and Stephen Sondheim wrote the lyrics. Those are like, I, JP is looking at me like he wants to I think the musical me. theater universe would implode, I <laughs> like, think. Probably. <laughs> I think so, too. Um, so, yeah. Are we talking about artists, too? Or is it just You can talk about whatever you want. And, okay. So, I thought do, it was do you specifically want, lyric, lyricists. Do you want me to go next, and then we'll get in that later? Okay, fine. So, <laughs> I mean, the first person that came to my mind was Mel Brooks. I mean, he's only done technically two shows, The Producers and Young Frankenstein, but... Um, I I really I love his work I love his movies but also the music that he does like if he can he could just bring that comedy to any genre any song really and he can do such a different songs like he can write ballads comedy songs solos big group numbers anything really and to me like being a comedic actor is like what I live for and it's so much fun and I really enjoy it like a lot of my favorite songs are Mel Brooks songs from his musicals but um, if we're talking about old school <laughs> I, I'm a very, very big fan of the old classic show. So I'm very much like Rogers and Hammerstein, Frank Lossner, Cole Porter, Irving Berlin, like all those guys, the classic guys, Canner and Ebb too even. They're like a lot of the old school stuff I really enjoy. And even like today, like Lin-Manuel Miranda, like Basic. he's like really, really big. Like every theater geek is in love with him right now, which is understandable. Um, but yeah, just like those are just a couple... But the ones I really look up to and admire, especially the music, just the songs, like they're catchy. And even if they were written almost a hundred years ago, they're still good today. And they're still, they're still catchy today. And there's so much fun. So Paulina, what do you think about uh, Stefan's choices? Yeah. Um, I was literally mouthing like debatable. <laughs> I <I'd be> strongly <laughs> disagree. We all have free will. We all make all our own decisions. Choices. Ah. Man. No, nah, I think, you know, like I can appreciate Rodgers and Hammerstein for starting the trend back in the day. Definitely dated, <laughs> like dated to the core. Like I can't listen to it now, you know, and, and, and like, yeah, Cole, you say with Cole Porter, I'm like, you know, I appreciate it for what it was at the time, but 
it doesn't translate to today. Like Rodgers and Hammerstein shows, they just they don't translate into today's world. And like Mel Brooks, like if I ever want to hate myself and like just be a sexist pig, I'll watch some Mel Brooks because <laughs> that's essentially what he is. So Mel, I'm going to apologize. I know you're <laughs> listening right now. Um, yeah, when you put your next show on, uh, I, I'm going to assume Paulina won't be cast, but you that, can cast me, Mel Brooks. <laughs> Mel Brooks, I'll cast me you. <laughs> because he's obviously listening. Yeah, no. Um, right. No, yeah. Next time you do your show and you write another extremely sexist representation of a woman, I will be very glad to not be cast in that role. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> Stefan, your your rebuttal to. Uh, her choices. So, first of all, I would just like to say that everything becomes dated no matter what it is, whether it's songs, fashion, anything really, it's it becomes dated. Debatable. So, even say from 80 years from today, Sondheim and them might be outdated. We don't know because it's in the future. But even in some maybe like Lin Manuel Miranda, that music, like the rapping stuff, might be outdated in the next 80 years. We don't know, right? And yeah, it may be outdated today, but that's why people are updating them and fixing them today. Like with the current revivals of Oklahoma and Kiss Me Kate on Broadway right now, they're fixing the book and fixing it so that it's not completely changed. But it works for today's environment, which is something we could do now, right? Because we now have a different mindset than we did 80 years ago. But back then, that was just the way it was. And people can see it as sexist at times. But unfortunately, if they are like that, then we change them. Then it's okay. It's just the music it is back then. Like even again, the whole thing with baby it's cold outside that whole debacle that happened last year i mean like songs nowadays are way more grotesque grotesque and inappropriate than it, it they are now so yeah it's a little bit debatable okay let's listen to a song let's play some music no <laughs> we'll come back to this after no we'll come back to this because it's interesting and i'd like to talk about it a little bit more with, with uh, the two of you um but what song should we throw it to uh, paulina do you have a choice yeah. it's not mel brooks so, i know <laughs> no that'll be so, coming later so in a theme of um lyricists and songwriters that i am inspired by the genius alan Menken. Who has you didn't been even my... mention him before. Wait, because I was I was ready. I, I had a plan for him. I had a plan for Ellen Mink and Stefan. <laughs> he oh, she did who it. has been my childhood hero and my adult hero. Um, we're going to honor him with this next song, as well as honor. You're making it sound a... like he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not interrupt my inspiring speech? We will honor him. The genius that is Ellen Minkin, as well as a previous role that I played which I love, Ariel in The Little Mermaid. So we will play part of your world. All right, let's listen to a little bit of <laughs> Little Mermaid here on Musical Theater Radio. We are back on the wonderful program called Be Our Guest. Today in studio, we have Stefan and Paulina. Thank you both for coming in. Um, in the last segment we were talking, we were talking about um, shows that, you know, need to be might have been offensive at the time or need to or offensive now or need to be updated and things like that how do you feel about um when they do update shows like that or the big kerfuffle about um baby it's cold outside which has been going on for years like maybe four or five years it's crazy every you know it's christmas when the complaints come up on twitter yeah. you, you just know forget the forget all the other stuff it's not december 1st it's when you start reading on twitter about baby it's cold outside <laughs> So, um, Stefan, how do you feel about when they when they update shows or they change them? Um, so when it comes to updating shows, I see there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's actually really amazing that they update shows uh, to fix it for modern times because it becomes more relatable nowadays. Because back then, those shows were written at a time where they were relatable, and now it's different because it was so it's very different time period. And I know, for example, like My Fair Lady, for example, back then was just seen as like can see as there's someone taking over someone's life and making them to someone who they're not. But I haven't seen the production yet, but I'm planning to is that they've, uh, the director of Bartlett year for the new Broadway production they just did. They were, he was aiming it towards the me too movement. So Eliza Doolittle became more of an activist and more of a stronger character than she ever was before. Again, I haven't seen it, so I can't say much about it, but I just think like the idea of just updating, changing shows is just really good and it's better for the time too but as at the same time we've seen you've seen my fair lady you've seen even oklahoma hundreds of times so updating and changing it means it's keeping it fresh and something new and something different which is which will be different from 
20 years ago even. So, yeah. Okay. And Paulina, what do you, what do you, what's yeah. your opinion on this? I agree with Stefan. I think that... That's a first. I know. I know. Don't get used to it. Like, <laughs> you heard it here, <laughs> it's folks. It's a rarity. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think that updating shows should be like necessary. Um, I think, I think that those shows, if not updated, can be kind of harmful. Um, and, you know, I think it, it would definitely, I think for certain shows, there should be a lot of, um, freedom to update them quite a bit, even in terms of like lyrics, book. I'm really interested about what you said with the My Fair Lady. Um, I'm curious to see exactly how much they updated. They would have to update the book like quite a bit mm -hmm. and update the ending in order to make it actually empowering for women. But um, yeah, I think I think it's it's great. I actually this isn't musical theater, but I know that uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company is doing a production of Taming of the Shrew right now, and they actually switched the genders. So that the shrew is a man and the person taming him is a woman, which I think is great. It's a, it's a great way to kind of perform that show, which otherwise is actually terrible and horrible. Yeah. Um, it's a great way to perform it um, in a way that isn't harmful to our society. Um, so I think things like that can definitely be done to shows. People just need to not be afraid of you know, changing things. Like, it's not, the sh you know, these Rodgers and Hammerstein shows, they're not biblical. Like, it's not the Bible. Like, you can, you, you should be able to update it based on, like, <laughs> it's not, you know, like, it, it should, it should be, you know, updated, um, I think. Yeah, and, and even if I could build on, even with the Taming of the Shrew thing, because, like, like I said before, Kiss Me Kate, which is a musical on, basically putting on a show, Taming the Shrew, they've even changed it where instead of, like, because I know, for example, one of the scenes in the original shows is when, uh, the male lead and the female lead are arguing on stage and the male lead actually like begins to slap her on stage like like punishing her from abroad because she did something wrong but they obviously cut that and changed it and things like that because they wanted to make it more modern and different because it again we're in a different time period than we were when this show came out in 1948 yeah so it's a huge huge difference on that yeah and like even I feel like with baby it's cold outside um like, I understand why people are kind of getting, like, triggered about it. Um, but I, I don't, I think that, like, canceling it was kind of an extreme move. Um, I think that, like, the song itself could still exist in our time. I do, I, but as long as they make a couple lyric changes. Like, I think, like, that's all there really needs. As I, I think there's, like, that one lyric that I kind of saw as problematic. I don't remember exactly what lyric it was. Um, but yeah, like I think that if they kind of just made a couple little, like, you know, um, moving around here and there with the lyrics tweaks. and changing. Yeah, tweaks, that's what I was looking for. Um, if they made a couple tweaks with the lyrics, I think it could, it could totally continue to be played during Christmas time. Yeah. Um, See, that's the great thing about this show. We're going to have dissenting opinions and, and, yeah. and things like that. And Because I completely disagree with both of you. Um, I do. As an, as an artist, I would hate it if somebody was changing my, my lyrics and my music and my book. Um, because if we change history, um, we don't learn from it. Like that's, that's my biggest problem. I don't mind. See the, the taming of the shrew thing, the switching the genders, that's great because that's not changing necessarily. That's more of a the, directorial change. That's a directorial idea. thing. By taking the book and editing it, that's a completely different thing by changing lyrics. Yeah. Um, if by changing the placement of time periods and things like that, um, that I have no problem with because I, as a director, I have no problem doing that. But as an artist, it would, I would hate to see my stuff all of a yeah. sudden. Where did this go? There's a there's a, there's a reason why it is what it is when it was, um, and especially the the baby is cold outside thing. People get hung up on the lyrics, and I don't think it's the lyrics. We have to look at the intent behind the lyrics. Words are words. Um, it's intent behind words. And that's just my opinion. Everybody's going to have a different opinion. I'm probably going to get booed off the radio station now. First, first, 
first week of shows and uh, everybody's already <laughs> called me out and says they hate me. But that's, you know, that's okay. Everybody has their own opinions and that's what this is about. Yeah. And you know what? I don't think anybody's right. I don't think anybody's wrong. Yeah. Unless you are evil. <laughs> like, <laughs> like then, then yes, you're wrong. And like, I agree with you because like when it comes to changing stuff, I'm, I'm also on the fence because I think there is a fine line where you can change some of the books and lyrics a bit, but then there's a fine line where you've gone too far and changed too much word here or there. Sure. But like changing entire dialogues and things like that, I think is when it gets too far. And as far as I know from revive new revivals, they're only tweaking a word here or there and changing the directing completely differently to show and implement that. But not, not they're not going in and saying like, okay, this scene, we're just cutting that and putting in a new one. No, they're not doing that. So See, I don't know. I think there's a difference between learning history in an educational setting and being presented with something that can be harmful. <laughs> and like, I think... Yeah, I think everyone, everyone as a generally understands that different time periods, there were different, you know, societal standards, people treated each other differently, all that. Everyone's kind of aware about all that. Um, and I'm not saying that like all media should just erase the fact that these things happened in those time periods. I just think that things need to be different. Those, these things need to be presented in a different way in our time period. They can still be a subject matter and they can still be talked about just in a different way than they did back then. Um, and I, I feel like if I was a creator or I was an artist who wrote a show um, that was dated for a specific time period and I found out that 100 years later they edited my work in order to make it more accessible to the time period of the time, I would actually be honored i would be happy that my work is being adapted in order to last longer um and kind of be timeless because that's how a work becomes timeless is if it's if if it's able to adapt to different time periods and yeah um with yeah and with I actually forget what you said about baby is cold outside <laughs> I'm like, I was um like so you're saying that it's, it's just lyrics are they're just words Oh yeah, and, and, and oh. actually, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, you know, I, I'm kind of like mixed opinions with the baby's cold on outside the because from one point of view, I read, I, I, I read somewhere that the intent behind it, it can be interpreted in many different ways, and people had many different interpretations of the lyrics. Some people were saying, oh, but it's not actually, he, he she's, she, he's not actually kind of being like rapey <laughs> like that because she she's kind of being flirtatious she's being like teasy she's kind of she's doing it with the intent of you know kind of making doing that um as a kind of like a flirtation method um but i think when it can become harmful when people interpret it as you know kind of being rapey and then them thinking that this is okay it's, I guess, like, that's when it can be, yeah. Why are you holding back laughter? <laughs> no, I'm holding back a yawn. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, you know what? Everybody on social media, let's get your opinion. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Um, go to uh, our Facebook page, Musical Theater Radio, or go to our Twitter account, which is at MTR underscore tweets. That's M-T-R underscore T-W-E-E-T-S. And let us know what you think. And with that, we're going to lead into something from My Fair Lady. So we're going to play uh, I Could Have Danced All Night here on Musical Theatre Radio. We are back here in MTR Studios in lovely Toronto. This is Be Our Guest. And I'm your host, John paul Yovanoff. We're sitting here with Paulina and Ooh. Stefan. So we had a little bit of a discussion before in the last segment. Uh, let's lighten it up a little bit. Um, so the two of you, you've been in shows, you've seen shows, we've all we've been around the shows before. What are some crazy things that have happened to you or you've seen that you just went, oh, wow, or oops, I missed my cue, or I forgot to come on stage, hint, hint, um, or something like that. So <laughs> who wants to go first? I will start with that. Go, so I've got... Definitely. Uh, two stories. Um, the first one was actually when I did The Little Mermaid uh, a few years ago. 
There is like, you know, I don't know if this happened to you, but this has happened to me a couple of times where you start doing a show for a while, you're in the groove of things and you just, it becomes really easy and you start thinking and you start thinking like you can start relaxing. relaxing a bit and not worrying. Mm -hmm. So I was playing Scuttle and this just happened after the storm scene where the ship tears apart and then Prince Eric goes in the water and this is when Ariel goes to get him in the water. And so the scene works is that I, what we did is that I get blown away by the wind and I didn't have fly so I was like on the ground and I get blown away and then after that I go upstairs and I'm on my phone you know I'm starting to relax for it and then all of a sudden I hear on the monitors can we get scuttled to stage please <laughs> scuttled to the stage and I went oh my god I completely forgot that scuttle had to be on stage with Eric and Ariel checking the heartbeat on the foot if you know the movie that's the scene I miss <laughs> so I remember running down from my change room to get to the stage and at that point they were still taking the boat off stage so from my original entrance it was blocked so I had to run to the other side of the stage stage manager saying you can't come on from here there's something blocking it so I had to run onto the other side of the stage as well and by that point the scene had already started and my lines were missed so that's one little muck up that happened to me and ever since then I have not missed a scene (laughs) and I still get teased about it to this day by the same people but uh, another story, though, that happened to me, uh, this happened recently in Beauty and the Beast. Um, our Beast, uh, one night, unfortunately, forgot, like me, forgot we had a scene together. And this was just before Beauty and the Beast. So in the musical, uh, it's Cogsworth, myself, Lumiere, and the Beast are on stage and we're pep talking him to get ready for the dance and stuff. And so he never came on stage. So I go on stage and Cogsworth on stage and I said something like, where could the master be? Uh, He's never late. And we both realized that he was not coming on anytime soon. So I decided to improv. And the first thing that I thought of was that I looked at my hands and they were candles. And I saw my buddy who was playing Cogsworth's hands. He didn't have anything on. They were just his hands. So I decided to go, you know, Cogsworth, you know what I really miss? My hands. I really miss grabbing stuff. <laughs> Said it exactly like that. And then I just kept going on. Like, I miss grabbing chairs, benches, like whatever just came to mind. It just <laughs> came out. And it was just really ridiculous. And eventually he came on. But yeah, so that's just like a little muck up that happened, you know, improv. And that's one of the things we laugh about today because it's just, it was so funny and it happened. It was just, that's live theater for you. Yeah. Right? Oh. Always have a backup plan. Just don't talk about missing your hands because that can be interpreted in many different ways. <laughs> yeah, no, that didn't happen. Don't say you miss grabbing things. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of the adults laughed at that. And I'm pretty sure that was the night you weren't, I don't think you were no, there that yet. I don't think yet, I was at that one. But a bunch of our friends from Vanity College Productions were there and they definitely noticed that. <laughs> uh, Elena. Yeah, so I have two stories as well. They're both related to shows that I did. So the first ever show I did with Unionville Theatre Company was Fame, the musical. And during our show, during the opening number, which I think is the PA song, all of a sudden, in the middle, right in the middle of the number, the fire alarm goes off in the theater. Oh, jeez. I remember this story. And we all, we were, and In our minds, because we've always been told, no matter what happens, keep going. No matter what happens, keep going. Yeah. So the fire alarm was going off, and we were like, I'm doing hard work. And we just kept, like, (laughs) we just kept doing the number, kind of looking confused. And the audience was, like, freaking out. They were like, what the heck is happening? And we thought it was just a false alarm. They'll just cut it, and it'll be done. And then it just kept going. And then uh, Doug, the uh, orchestra conductor, stopped playing the music. And the SM, the assistant stage managers came on stage, and Chris McBride, who um, was on the PA system, he was like, "Okay, everyone has to exit right now." And <laughs> he said it a lot more calmly. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Oh yeah, yeah. He was probably like, "Everyone, please exit the theater to the nearest exit sign." And <laughs> so we kind of ran off the stage. The audience started leaving, and then literally two seconds later, the alarm clock. The alarm, clock. alarm the, clock. The, the fire alarm ended, and they were like, "Oh, just kidding! It was a false alarm. You can get back." And we, like, we were literally just off stage. Like, wait, where do we start? Where do we get back? And the audience was so confused. And then we kind of just the Doug just started up the music again, and we just kept going. <laughs> but it was like the awkwardest five minutes <laughs> of any show I've ever done. And then the my other story, which I will never let this go 
from my memory. It was probably the most embarrassing, <laughs> like, screw up I've ever done on stage. Um, it was when I was in high school, I did a production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. And I was Linus. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the time, I just always played teenage boys for some reason. <laughs> but, um, and I had, there was the scene that I was in, um, and the opening lines were like, happiness is, and I, I, did a, I had to do a monologue about happiness, because that's in, in the show. Um, and for some reason, I thought that my scene was started a scene before it actually was supposed to happen. So, all and I was... I was confident. I was like so sure. I was like, no, this is my scene coming up. And so I, and who plays the Max who played Charlie Brown, he was like, no, Paulina, like it's not your scene right now. And I was like, no, it is my scene. And I, and I enter like from center stage and I go, happiness is, and I look to my right and Lucy and Schroeder are about to start their song. (laughs) (laughs) And I just, I just stopped and just turned around and ran off. <laughs> I was like, and, and then literally after they finished their song, I had to go back out and be like, happiness is, because that was the actual beginning of the scene. And it was, yeah, everybody in the crowd was laughing. I was like so embarrassed. And afterwards, my drama teacher came up to me with like the most disappointed look. And I was like, I'm so sorry. See, if that was me, I would totally milk that situation. Oh, I know. Okay, I was like, 16 and it was like I have it was like I was just freaked out I was like deer in the headlights <laughs> literally <laughs> so yeah oh man see the nice thing is I've been perfect my entire life so I've never <laughs> oh, made a mistake okay. really okay just honestly kidding. I don't even remember if I have <laughs> nice impersonation of yeah me. well <laughs> yes. there's there's you you might not have noticed but uh the first show JP and I did together was Peter and Starcatcher and if you don't know the show, it's a lot of it's about a cast of ten to fifteen. We play over, I would say, over a hundred characters between all of us. Okay, oh, yeah. like that's no exaggeration. <laughs> well, more so fifty characters really. Then, okay. but it's it was a crazy show with costume changes and things like that. And uh, I know for me, I played um, the also I was the nanny, the head of the mermaids, and I was also the alligator head. So a lot of times we had troubles with the alligator head because it was just so ginormous and I had so many quick changes in between. But I just remember one night uh, what happens is that one of the characters throws something in the alligator's mouth and my head was actually at the head of the alligator. So when I opened the mouth, she actually threw it and it hit me right in my eye. And so I was just like kind of beating my eye and then I had to get (laughs) off, go change into my mermaid costume and then get on top of the set. Oh, so a lot of time I was half blinded and even for that bit I if you I don't know if you saw it that night but my eye was closed for that one and I kept rubbing it a lot because no, of don't that remember. so yeah just like things like that but you weren't there so it's okay yeah, yeah. So, eh, that's fine because <laughs> yeah there's and, and it doesn't matter if you're amateur or professional because I, I know my my friend used to uh, run the uh, front of house for the Princess of Wales um, when Lord of the Rings was there and if you knew anything about it, it was this big giant set with mountains and orcs and stuff like that. And it rotated and things like that. And pretty much every other night it <laughs> stopped because an orc set off a safety measure. They'd have to stop the show and reset it. So, you know, it happens all the time, but at least none of us were in Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is legendary. And we'll just leave it at that. Sorry, Julie, if you're listening in Bono. <laughs> Because I know Bono's tuning in, obviously. <laughs> Mel Brooks, Bono, <laughs> the, all the big guys. They're just all like sharpening their knives. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know nobody's coming on the show for this guest. So what, what are you going to do? So, Pauline, any t- song that you want to go into next? Yeah, let's do Journey to the Past from Anastasia. Ooh. So One of my favorite. Perfect. We're going to do a little bit of Anastasia. We're going to pay some bills first because we got to keep the lights on here in the studio. But then we'll be coming back with Anastasia here on Be Our Guest here on Musical Theater Radio. We are back here on Musical Theater Radio's program. Be our guest. My name is Jean Paul Yovanoff. I am your host for today. We have a couple of fantastic people, uh, Stefan and Paulina, joining us today, co hosting and uh, helping choose the music. So, my question to you, the two of you, is Is there any show or performer you wish you had seen 
live on stage. You know, they can be dead. They can still be alive. It's up to you. So anything that you just, oh, I wish I had seen it. Yeah, I, I really wish that I got to see um, Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway. It was, they did it like, I think two years ago. With Danny Burstein. Yeah, yeah. with Danny Burstein. Um, that's literally one of my favorite shows. It's like just like dear to me, and I, I've never been, I've never had, I've never seen it at all anywhere. Um, but Danny Burstein was really, really good as Tevye, from what I've heard. So like, I really wish I got to see that. Um, and my like idol and all time favorite performer that I look up to always is Sierra Bogus. So I really want to see a show with her. Um, I, she was, she did, um, it should have been you, I think that was the last show she did on, on Broadway. It should have been you. And I wish I got to see that. Also Laura Osnes, who is another huge, like idol of mine. Um, I really wanted to see her as a uh, Marguerite in Scarlet, the Scarlet Pimpernel concert. It was one night only, which sucks, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I love that show and I love her. And so I was like, oh man, that was like the perfect show for her. And I wish I got to see, it. I wish it wasn't one night only. <laughs> well, maybe if you ask nicely, she'll do it again. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You never know. Very possible. Hard enough. Seven? Um, for me, uh, it would have to be like my absolute favorite show of all time is the producers so the original cast producers nathan lane matthew broderick gary beach roger Barr, brad oscar katie hoffman i could name the entire cast if i wanted to as you can see um yeah it's like my all-time favorite show and it's it also holds the record for the most tony wins it's just it's like to me it's the perfect comedic show to bring something like that and i was especially would love to see it especially when it came out because it was around during when 9-11 happened in New York. So it was definitely a show for people to go see just to have fun and forget everything that was going on outside and to f- and just to remember how to laugh in a time that was so hard for America. So just even being in that time period and seeing a show like that, I would just really like to see how people sat in the theater and just forgot about everything. And to see Nathan Lane and Gary Beach and Matthew Broderick or some of my very big uh, Broadway and acting legends I look up to. Uh, another one I would love, love to see original one would be Curtains. A little uh, Curtains is a little known show by Kander and Ebb, and it starred David Hyde Pierce. And again, David Hyde Pierce is one of my favorite actors of all time. And it also had Deborah Monk and a bunch of great actors in that show. And it's a hilarious show, and I would love to see that. I did get to see David Hyde Pierce perform in Hello, Dolly!, a couple years ago when when Hello Dolly came did not see Bette Midler because Bette Midler prices were impossible <laughs> but I saw Donna Murphy who I enjoyed just as much and I think she did an amazing job but I went to I wanted to see David Hyde Pierce and Gavin Creel Gavin Creel was another person I really wanted to see and I finally got to see him performing that and he was just amazing and yeah those are just a couple Ooh, of shows and yeah. I feel like this is a very basic answer but like the original cast of Hamilton <laughs> like I feel like everyone in the world would have like wanted to see the original cast of Hamilton because like Hamilton is kind of it's coming to Toronto now I'm not as excited about it because it's not the original cast it's not Lin-Manuel Miranda it's not Leslie Odom Jr. it's not Philippa Sue so it's like yeah (laughs) Yeah. well for myself I would love to uh, get a time machine and go back something like Mandy Patinkin in Sunday in the Park with George or um, Evita just Mm. I've seen the classics, uh, the big ones. Yeah, I've seen them on. They've got it recorded, right? So I've mm-hmm. seen it there. But to see it live would have been just for the first time seeing it with people seeing it oh, for the yeah. first time. Just, that would have been so incredible. Yeah, uh, Ethel Merman would have just been interesting. Oh, just, yeah. just to see her on stage and how big and brash she because yeah. she's a legend now, right? Yeah. And none of us, um, you know, I'm older than you guys, but she's way older than I am. Yeah. So there's no way I would have. I think she died in. 84 so there's no way i would have seen her yeah um that would have been just really cool to see um the first uh, maybe the first showing of hair is it weird i i knew you were gonna say either hair or rent (laughs) oh in my head i was gonna say rent or hair for you i'm about to lose more listeners but rent i saw on broadway and 
I'm not a fan of Thank Lent. you. It's, I think everybody in this room doesn't It was bread. dated when, like, 10 minutes after it was yeah, done. Yeah. I saw, I, when I was in New York, I saw Rent in Urinetown. Ooh. Oh, Urinetown was so good. Yeah. yeah. It was just so good. And I'm glad I saw it. Oh, and another show that none of us will ever see in our lifetime. We talked about it, Spider-Man. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just to see the spectacle and the... The chaos. The cluster yeah. of yeah. the things that would have gone on yeah. would have been incredible. Man, can I add someone to my list? No, you may never add anything. I You're stuck with what you have. I would love to have seen Julie Andrews as Eliza Doolittle on Broadway oh, yeah. back Ooh. when she did in the 50s. Just yeah. like, just to see, I want to see Julie Andrews perform live and like... I don't know if she's up for it at this point anymore, but like back, like to be able to see her in her prime, yeah. that would have been like amazing. Yeah. For Seeing sure. some of these classic shows when they first came out yeah. that you went, oh, whatever at the time maybe, but now you look back and go. Phew. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, another one I would really like to see actually too is the original sh- cast and all that of Titanic. Oh yeah, what? because it's so random. Well, it's because <laughs> because I would love to see the grandeur and the scale of the show, and also because a lot of famous Broadway actors today start. Titanic was one of their first shows, like Brian Darcy James, Michael Cerveris, John Bolton, like a bunch of them started in Titanic, and they were like mm-hmm. some of the lead characters, some smaller parts, but now they're like big Broadway actors and stuff. So just to see like that, and just to see that giant cast, that giant set. And all that would have been amazing to see, just for the spectacle. Yeah, of it. we were talking off the air just before uh, we came back on that I we were talking about Ragtime, and I'd seen it in Toronto. And you know, you got Brian Stokes Mitchell, you got Audrey McDonald, you have uh, Liam Michelle. Like the cast at, at the time, I didn't even think about it. Like you just went, "Oh, this is this show is so incredible." The music and the the acting. Yeah. And now I'm looking back on, "Holy crap, that was a good yeah. show!" And what a cast. Oh yeah. So yeah, there's there's. Is there any other shows you go back in time and go, ah, oh, I wish I'd seen the original of that, just from shows that you love? I mean, I feel like, for, because I'm, I'm, I'm like a Disney fanatic, like <laughs> the original Beauty and the Beast with like Susan Egan mm. and the original Little Mermaid with Sierra Boggess, because as I mentioned before, I'm obsessed with Sierra Boggess. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. I would have, I would have loved to have seen Spam a lot. Mm. Spam a lot, I think, would have been so much fun with Tim Curry, David Hyde Pierce, oh, yeah. Christopher Sieber, Hank Azaria. I think just like seeing all those comedic geniuses on stage, just having fun in just so many different mm-hmm. ways, would have been awesome to see. And uh, I know it was recently, but I didn't get the chance to see Something Rotten. Mm-hmm. I would have really liked to see Something Rotten. That's another big show I would have liked to see. I have, I did have the fortune to see Christian Borle performing Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I thought he was phenomenal in that. But to see him as Shakespeare, I think would have been hilarious and awesome too. Yeah, it's very cool. Some of the yeah. some of the shows and, and people. I feel like there's something like really special with seeing an original cast, yeah. like the, mm-hmm. the the cast that's like s- creates the show. I think there's something so special about that. Like yeah. this summer or this a couple summers ago, me and Stefan went to New York, and it was my first time seeing any Broadway show, and we got to see the original cast of Anastasia and the original cast of The Great Comet of 1812 with, like, Josh Groban. Oh, yeah. So, like, it just felt like you were a part, like, you you witnessed, like, history, because these are the people that Mm -hmm. are cemented on the recordings and kind of become legends for originating these characters, and you can say, like, I got to see them. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's a pretty incredible, my first Broadway show I ever got to see was A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. And I just, one thing that I'll never forget was um, meeting Jefferson Mays, who was the original. It wasn't the original, original cast, but a, a replacement here or there. But Jefferson Mays was with the entire run and he played all eight members of the Dysquith family. And I just, I'll just never forget meeting him and just seeing what it was like to meet someone of the original cast for the first time and something like that. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to head back to a song. What Any particular song we want to hear? I would love to pick I Want to Be a Producer from The Producers uh, because it is my uh, absolute favorite song. You can say what you want about that, but I love that song. It's. I, mean, I, I remember listening. the first time I heard it, that's when I like knew I wanted to play that role. Didn't even know what it was about. I just heard it. And it's a guy singing about his dream, his dream to do something else than what he regularly does. And that's what I saw. I'll and that's what that. I want. I'll give you that. All right. Well, let's head into that song. I want to be a producer here on Musical Theater Radio. 
We are back here on Be Our Guest on Musical Theater Radio. We just heard something from Little Women, and we got to play that for Paulina because she was in it. I I saw her in it before I even knew who you were. Oh my God, you saw me in it? Yeah, I came. You saw Little Women? I came to the theater. Uh, That was when I was still in Ottawa, and I wasn't involved um, in VCP at that point because I'd been gone for five years. Yeah, and you came in, and I saw you, but I didn't know who you were. So (laughs) we are here celebrating. the very first Be Our Guest on Musical Theatre Radio with uh, Stefan and Paulina, and we're going to do lots more of these. So, we're all performers, we all were performers, I don't perform as much anymore, but that's okay. What is your dream role? If you could pick any show, any part, and be there, center stage, the spotlight hits you, what would it be? I mean, I have multiple ones, yeah. <laughs> not just one. We have a list. But um, this is only a three-hour show. Do you want? Do you want to go first? Or you want okay. me to go first? Sure, I'll go first. I was actually lucky enough to actually play my ultimate dream role, which was Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's something that I will never let go. <laughs> I will never stop thinking about it. Um, so that's kind of like crossed off the checklist. So have you wanted to do that role. since you were a kid? Because I saw on Facebook you posted yes. a picture of you as a little yeah. little girl dressed as Belle. Belle. Yeah, I literally wanted to be Belle since I was a toddler. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> and like, I, yeah, I always wanted to do it. I was always like, if any company's doing it, the minute I have the opportunity, like I'm going to go for it. And yeah, I was like on cloud nine the whole time. So now that that's off the checklist... Um, I would say that my dream roles are Natasha in The Great Comet of 1812, which the likeliness of that show ever being produced <laughs> around here is very slim. You never know. But it's an, it's an amazing show, and that is an amazing role, and I'm obsessed with it. Um, Anastasia in Anastasia. Um, Cinderella in Into the Woods. Classic. And... Um, Hoddle in Fiddler on the Roof. Some of those are so, doable. Yeah. Some of them are doable. <laughs> Only because, you know, like you said, the, right. the Natasha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so some of them might not get produced as much. So yeah. Fiddler, definitely community theaters out there. You'll find a role somewhere. Yeah. That's not a problem. I feel like Into the Woods is also. Oh, yeah. Lots mm-hmm. of people do Into the yeah. Woods, right? All right, Stefan? Well, just like Paulina, I had the great fortune to play actually two of my dream roles. So one of them was, was Lumiere. I've been wanting to, that was like my top dream Disney role was to play Lumiere. He was always my favorite character. Be Our Guest was always my favorite Disney song. And it was just like the best number like I could ever be a part of and do. Not to mention that with all the gadgets and the candles and stuff was amazing. And the costume was phenomenal. I I couldn't have imagined it any other way of doing it. And I was so grateful and thankful to be able to play that role. And another dream I actually got to play was Marcellus in The Music Man. Um, I saw the film, Buddy Haddock was obviously Marcellus in the film and Sammy Shapoopy and I remember him doing all that and I instantly said to my friend who I was watching with I gotta do that song right now I gotta do it it was just the character was so much fun and so energetic and it was just like I love playing those characters the energetic fun sidekick roles the ones that are always like get the big dance numbers but not the big solo numbers because I love the big group numbers or give me the spotlight like 25 people dancing around me I'm completely fine with that (laughs) I love it don't worry about it um but my dream roles, I'm like my top, top, top is definitely Leo Bloom for the producers. Like I, I the first time I saw that show on the movie because they actually made a movie of the Broadway of the show, and I just remember connecting with Leo Bloom so much, saying like he's in this job he doesn't like, he wants to do something that he loves, and he wants to go the distance and do the big thing, and I felt really connected with that, and so like I instantly fell in love with the character. Um, and he also gets to sing an amazing song. Like I want to be a producer, which you heard earlier. Mm-hmm. It's just, again, it's this big tap dancing number with a bunch of chorus scrolls. I mean, like I'm fine doing that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, but some other roles I would love to play would be all of the dice squid families from a gentleman's guide to love and murder, which is eight roles and six guys and two women would love to play all those parts. Uh, Lieutenant Frank Chaffee from curtains. He's a guy who's obsessed with musical theater on Broadway, and I am obsessed with musical theater on Broadway, so that I'd feel like I'd fit in perfectly. Um, some other roles, Prince Topher in Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, the Broadway version, the updated one, not so much the older ones, because those ones 
they're okay, but they're not the the new one they redid. The character is a lot funnier and fun, I would say, than just your classic prince role. Um, some other characters that I would love to play. Um, I always have like a list of five at a time, and of course, times I'm on like this, I always forget. <laughs> um, a Cornelius Hackle from Hello Dolly. Put on your Sunday clothes. Like I saw Gavin Krill do it on Broadway, and I instantly knew I wanted to play that role. Again, another character who doesn't like what he's doing. He wants to do something different for one day. He wants to go to town and have fun. Someone like that. I love playing roles like that. And um, I would love to play Harold Hill in Music Man. It's one of the biggest and hardest roles for a male actor in the musical theater world because he is literally on stage for every scene except one or two minutes here and there. I would I would love to do that. Okay, so if Hugh Jackman drops out, we'll give you a call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just about to say, like, uh, Hugh Jackman, if you're listening, you can't do it, just hit me up, you know. Or if you need a more cellist, I know the role pretty well. Just call me up and I'm there. Well, Hugh is listening, Hugh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Hugh, obviously he's there. listening. I love you. And then, like, <laughs> even, even, like, my list is very long. Even, like, in Young Frankenstein, like, uh, Dr. Frankenstein and Igor would be hilarious because, again, they're two hilarious comedic actors. Either one of them I'd be completely fine playing. I would be so happy to play either one of those. Oh my god, um, I'm literally gonna like grow old and die before you finish this list. Yeah, <laughs> you can. I always have a long, long list of roles. Always, and one that I actually saw recently is um, Henri. Uh, I can't even say his name. Henri from American in Paris. American. An American in Paris. Yeah, that that's a role that I just saw recently, and I again, it's another character. Who wants to do something different with his life and mm. you can start seeing a trend yep. with my characters that I like playing Very and cool. wanting to play but yeah those are just some yep. a few <laughs> a couple here and there yeah he's got to be on for at least another eight episodes I guess to get through them all pretty much okay, yeah good to know yeah, yeah I never really had a dream role to play um, oh really no it's just I think the closest I got was uh, the Russian in chess Ooh. which I did so I was happy yeah, <laughs> I loved cool. that part that was fun um yeah, I, I. See, the problem is you also have to be the look, the, the right type. part, and, yeah. Yeah. and have the right voice, and like I can't sing rock. That's just not my yeah. voice. Mm-hmm. Like, so yeah, I love uh, Rock of Ages. That show is so damn funny, but I could mm-hmm. never sing it. Um, but yeah, the Russian was perfectly yeah. in my wheelhouse. Um, I would love, and again, I'm too old now, and uh, uh, from uh, last five years. Oh, okay. Okay. I can sing the crap out of that because <laughs> my voice is perfectly. But yeah. you know, and you you get to that point where okay, now you have to modify your yeah your, your list, look your yeah. age. Well, yeah. you never know. Maybe someone will want to do the last five years with a couple a people who are at certain age group. You never know. So that. we're gonna change it. <laughs> You're not changing the story. It's, it's true. It's we're not changing the directorial side of it. It's true. So yeah. maybe one day, maybe I'll have to do that. I'll yeah. have to direct it myself. Make and it be more in relatable it. to yeah. another generation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the old generation. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> cool. All right. Oh. So we got to go pay some more bills. We got to keep the lights on here in the MTR studios. So we'll be right back after these commercials. Uh, and we're going to wrap it up with uh, Paulina and Stefan. I know. I'm sorry. It's, it's, we, we've come into the end. It's been almost three hours we've been here. That's All right. Insane. So, pay some bills, and we'll be back. So, we are coming to the end of our very first episode of Be Our Guest here on Musical Theater Radio. I, I just want to thank you so much, Paulina and Stefan, for uh, joining us today in studio, uh, coming out, spending some time to talk about yourselves, about the shows you love, stirring up a little controversy with each other. <laughs> As and, we do. And, and, that's, and that's why we love you guys, because you, you create such great tension <laughs> with each other. <laughs> so... Well, so Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, Thank you. This was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, I'm always here. I'm going to be doing this every day. Every Saturday is going to be our be our guest. We have other uh, shows going on that you can tune into and check out. Um, but before we end, I, I always have asked our guests, well, don't always because this is the first one, but I will yeah. always ask our guests five questions. All right? You just got to answer them off the top of your head. Quick answers. Yikes. There's no right or wrong, but there is wrong. So just to let you know, <laughs> it's, JP. It's, it's, of course it's me. Yeah. It's going to be right or wrong. Of course. And I will judge you on what you say. <laughs> yep. All right. So used to it. five questions. First question. Just answer right away. Sondheim or Weber? Sondheim. Sondheim. All right. See, you guys, you, you worked well together. Cool. Any reason? 
Or just because? Uh, I only really like Phantom of the Opera from Weber and a bit of School of Rock, and that's about it. And I like I prefer Sondheim songs and shows over. So Good that's enough. all, just personal preference. I just, I just think he's, his lyrics are genius. <laughs> cool, simple, easy, quick to the point. All right. Next question. Favorite show you've seen? Just one. Hello, great- Dolly. Oh. Hello, Dolly with uh, Donna Murphy and David High Pierce. Mm-hmm. The Great Comet of 1812. Very cool. Big Josh Groban fan? Uh, I mean, I was a fan of him in the show. I, I'm not... Okay. He, he was a nice guy. <laughs> he, <raised me> up. <laughs> he also did chess. He did. Yeah. That was great. My favorite version of Anthem. All right. Question number three. Jukebox, mu- jukebox musicals, good or bad? Um, I'm going to say de- depends. Because there's some, there's some that work. Like I know old shows like Anything Goes or things like that that are redone with like Cole Porter music. They like, are considered jukebox musicals, which are a good idea. Um, Mamma Mia worked. Uh, Rock of Ages worked. American Age. There's some shows that I'm like, really? Really? But I, I honestly think it's a hit or miss when it comes to jukebox musicals. And that was one of the choices I gave you. Good or bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I picked the or. Okay, the or. And Paulina? Man, I'm so, I'm lame. I'm the same mode as Stefan. <laughs> I'm like, it depends. I'm going to say, here, okay, here's my answer. If it's not Moulin Rouge or Mamma Mia, then bad. No, there's a lot of jukebox musicals that are good out there, but that's a conversation that's for another day. That's my answer for you. All right, that, that'll do for now. Because, yeah, we, it's only a three-hour show. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, next question. Musicals from movies, good idea or lazy? Good idea, but recently it's been going on too much. In the last three years especially, too much. But I think it's a good idea. Okay. Lazy. Agreed. Okay. Don't like it. <laughs> the thing is, you the know, original. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, if you look at it, we're going to be getting into the '90s movies now because they've worked their way through all the '80s. Stuff. Oh yeah. So the question is, what's going to be next? The 2000s. 2000s. Like Avatar. Like, uh, like Lord what? Of, oh no, we were doing. We Lord, Lord knows, of the Rings. That's the thing. Lord yeah. knows Harry Avatar Potter, could musical? work. Yeah. Could, I mean, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel started doing like a whole Marvel Broadway universe uh, where like other actors in their costumes come on stage. Yeah, after Spider Man, I don't. Yeah. Think that's happening. Um. But well, I, well, there is a Batman musical out there that yeah. never went very far. But I, I do think it can work. Like I know some original writers wanted their movies to be musicals at first. Um, but some are good, some are bad. And if, you could probably tell which ones work and which ones can't. If a music if a movie was already written as a musical, then it makes sense for it to transfer totally. on the stage. If it was not meant to be a musical, it shouldn't be a musical. <laughs> That's what I will say. It, yeah, it's it, again. It's I consider it lazy, but there's but sometimes like, some iconic yeah, ones like okay, Hairspray. Yeah. Hairspray was a film, but not a musical, and it's a pretty well-known big true. musical. No. I, th- I think the best one might be uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, starting oh. out as a '60s B-rated Jack Nicholson horror movie, and then turning into this brilliant yeah. little true. piece of theater. So who knows? Again, no right or wrong answers, but there are wrong answers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, this one does have a definite, the last question does have a definite right or okay. wrong answer. And I will judge you on it. All it's right. very important. All right. Food in the theater, yes or no? No. No. But drinking in the theater <laughs> should be a yes. As long as it's not a sippy cup. <laughs> At least a sippy cup wouldn't spill. But it would make a lot of noises. Would you prefer a spill or a noise? A sippy cup? Doesn't make any noise. That's a straw. Especially if a kid's drinking it. Kids don't go to the theater. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the answer is no. Just to give you the an answer. Yeah, yeah. So correct answer. So you can come back at some point. Oh, perfect. Awesome. We passed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you once again for both of you coming out, spending a little bit of time in the studio, talking to me, giving me your opinions, just uh, spending some time and helping me on the very first episode of Be Our Guest. Thank, Thank you so you, much. JP. Thank you. No problem. All right, everybody out there in listening land, this is Jean-Paul Yovanoff, live, pre-recorded in Toronto's lovely MTR studios. We will be back next Saturday with a whole new guest list to talk to you. Stick around. we got some more great songs coming in. We're going to end today, end, uh, Be Our Guest, with... Paulina, you want to say it? We're going to end with Belle from Beauty and the Beast. There we go. Belle from Beauty and the Beast here on Musical Theatre Radio.